In today's video, I check out the Bamboo Labs X1 that I just received. But before we get into that, I want to share with you what the GGGG is for this month. Each month, Bob the Beholder picks some of my Patreon supporters to receive gratitude gifts. And for this month of September of 2022, we have these three Pathfinder terrain from Archon Studios. And the City of Absalom set is all painted up. These other two sets aren't opened, and so two other Patreon supporters will be receiving that. Also, $100 will be going towards a crowdfunder campaign, which the Patreon supporters are currently voting upon. If you want to find out more information, go ahead and use the link below to go to my Patreon page and get more details there. For those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that most of my videos have to do with printing out 3D terrain for board games and for tabletop miniature games. And I know a number of you have said that you are waiting for the technology where there will be a printer that is true plug and play. Because one of the realities of current printers, whether that is FDM printers or resin printers, is that learning how to use it and troubleshooting is a hobby unto itself. And so many of you are like, I don't want a second hobby. I only have enough time to really play games and things like that. So needing to troubleshoot and needing to bed level, all that kinds of stuff, uh, you said no way and until there is a printer where it is true plug and play where it does all of that stuff automatically almost like computer printers you know for just printing out documents and things like that that is automatic plug and play you don't have, really have to do any maintenance other than replacing ink cartridges and so when i saw the reviews for the x1 when it was kickstarting a couple of months ago a lot of them were saying that this is the closest thing to a true plug and play so Bamboo Labs didn't send this to me. I actually kickstarted it at the cheapest level. This is the X1, not the X1C, which is the upgraded print head components. And also I didn't get the spool, which enables you to change the colors of your PLA mid print. So even though I got the cheapest version, which I think retails $4,000, it did cost me total with shipping. Uh, about that much, a thousand dollars. Now these models are currently available for pre-order because they're not going to take on new orders until all of the Kickstarter pledges have been delivered, which I appreciate a lot, but hopefully that will be available soon. Also, the Kickstarter raised approximately seven million dollars, so it was very successful, and they waited until it was ready to go to production before they launched the Kickstarter. So there was a very quick turnaround time of about two months from the moment that the Kickstarter ended and that they delivered these machines. Shipping was pretty expensive because I think the discounted Kickstarter price was around $800 and it was about another $150 in shipping because as you can see, it comes in this massive box because there is no real building or putting the machine together. It just comes ready to print. So let's go ahead and open it up and really test to see if this is true plug and play. One of the first things you're going to notice is that it is a full enclosure. So that's going to be able to regulate the temperature that's inside and have more consistent temperature. I'm not going to show this next bit where I set up everything and put everything together because it isn't that complicated. Again, because you're not assembling the printer like you are with most other printers. Okay, one thing really quickly that I wanted to say is that this top piece does come off. But be very careful because I thought it was actually hinged. And so when I pulled it up this way, uh, I almost let go thinking that it wouldn't fall off. But it is completely a separate piece. So just be aware of that if you get this machine. The only other assembly was needing to cut the zip tie that was holding the print head in place. To attach the spool holder in the back and to unscrew the three screws that was holding down the build plate. So I went ahead and put some PLA in there and let's fire it up and see how it goes. All right, so I noticed that this light turned on once I plugged it in. And now it's gonna walk me through 
uh, setup menu. So let me go ahead and do that really quickly. All right, so I ran into my first problem where I couldn't get it connected to my Wi-Fi. I'm not 100% sure why. It might be because of my mesh. Uh, might be might not be 2.4 gigahertz compatible and it has to be. So I'm gonna research that, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and go do our first print. You can use an SD card. There is a slot for an SD card here. So you do not have to have internet connection. I'm gonna work on it because I do want internet connection that will make it more handy. But let's go ahead and print out a Benchy. That is the classic test. And I just love this interface. It's super clear, just like a phone in terms of resolution uh, says it will do all this. Again, I didn't do anything. It sort of calibrated itself, took a couple of, of minutes just to do that. I did put on some glue stick onto the bed, which it did come with. Um, it said that uh, we should use it. It's recommending it. So I'm going to go ahead and just use it. I, I've used glue sticks on my other printers before, so I don't care that I have to use it. Is vib I don't know what vibration calibration is. Um, automatically detected PLA. I think that's just the default. I do have um, my own brand of PLA, which is eSun Plus, which is my go-to PLA. And let's go ahead and just print and see what happens. Okay, so I think that's the last. I think it does 16 different points on the bed. And. It's still bed leveling, but that actually took quite a bit of time in order for it to auto bed level. So check this out, I have not sped up the print at all, and that's how quickly it is printing it out. But because it's moving so fast, it's super loud, and look how much it's shaking. You can tell by the lamp back there, one of my lamps, how much it's shaking. Part of it is because I do have slats on here, so this isn't the most stable of tables. So once I put it in its permanent location, I'll make sure that it's more stable. But it seems like I'm getting a successful first print here. Let me open this up so you can see it. All right, so it's been a couple of days and I've had an opportunity to test print a bunch of stuff. And I know that a couple of days isn't enough time to really put everything to the test, but I gotta say so far that this printer truly is the closest to plug and play as I've ever experienced. Aside from just some of the assembly of attaching things on the externals, it's pretty much ready to go. Probably within a half hour of unboxing, you can uh, fire this up and get it running. And because of the auto bed leveling system, where it runs through all of those paces at the very beginning of every print, you really aren't doing any kind of adjustment of height, of trying to get the nozzle perfectly to where it needs to be because of the LiDAR that can detect the prints and how deep or how high it is on the build plate. I think that is a huge advantage to this being correctly level every single time. And as anyone can tell you who owns a 3D FDM printer, the biggest pain with these machines is getting that bed level correctly. And that's why I don't really want any machine that doesn't have auto bed leveling. Also a big advantage is that this printer is printing at three times the speed of my current Prusa MK3S's. So this Benchy took less than half an hour to print, whereas on my MK3S, this takes an hour and a half. And then all of these other prints that I made, it is approximately only about a quarter or a third of the speed is required than my typical prints on my MK3S's. Now I run my printers at stock speed. I don't push the envelope in terms of how fast that they can print. Uh, just because I have multiple printers and I would rather them last long rather than pushing the envelope and having them break down earlier. So that is one of the concerns I have with this machine is, and you saw some of that video with how fast this thing prints, how fast 
the print head is moving, I am a little bit concerned that this isn't going to last as long as my Prusa's because my original machine I've had for almost four years now and it's still running strong. The only thing I've ever had to replace was some of the nozzles as well as the uh, bed heating cord. I had to replace that, but other than that, it's still running strong. So I do wonder a little bit because it is running so quickly whether or not that's going to cause some kind of breakdown in the future more quickly than you would have a machine that's running slower. Now I could slow down the pace, but I'm going to go ahead and just use the stock settings for this and see uh, whether or not it lasts as long as some of the other printers. But honestly, this really is a plug and play machine. So if you've been waiting to get into 3D printing but haven't wanted to have a whole nother hobby in order to do it, the Bamboo Lab X1 definitely is the machine for you. And at a price of $1,000, it's going to be comparable to the Prusa MK3S assembled version. Now I always buy the disassembled version, which is $750. But because this is fully assembled as well, that's sort of the comparison. And what about the print quality? So I did a comparison between the print quality with the Prusa versus the uh, Bamboo, and I really can't tell a difference. I think the print quality is really high, and I'm not getting any of the artifacts that I was worried about getting from a faster printing machine. So the quality, as far as I can tell, is really high. Now, are there any downsides that I experienced with this machine? And I would say yes. The first thing was when I made my initial prints, it was really hard to actually get the test lines that was printed to do the bed leveling. It was really hard to get that off of the build plate. Now, I love how this build plate is a flex plate. You can peel it off just like on the Prusa MK3S. And I'm not sure though what kind of material this is. It's not metal. So um, for wh whatever reason, I would try to you know flex it, and I just could not get the the prints itself. These were really easy to pop off, but the test print lines that it prints at the beginning of every print, uh, it was really hard to do that. So I found out that one of the first things, if you get this printer, you want to print out is the scraper, and this scraper uh, is in the internal memory, and this metal piece actually came in the box, and so you want to use this or just a regular razor blade to carefully scrape off the really um, small print lines that you're getting for the, for the bed leveling because <laughs> otherwise it's going to be really hard. Also, I went ahead and washed off all of the glue stick that I had put on for that initial print because you don't need it. At least right now you don't really need it because everything that I've printed so far really sticks to the plate. And I'm wondering if they suggested the glue stick because this thing moves so much and I don't even have it on right now. Typically when I'm doing a review, I have the machine running while I do my final conclusions. But this thing shakes so much, I didn't want to have it on right now. And I was worried as well that the prints would fall off of the bed because of some of the shaking with how fast it prints. Don't follow their advice. Don't use a glue stick at the beginning. You might have to later, but at least for now, I found that all the prints have been sticking really well to this build plate. And as I mentioned before, it is really loud. Although if you do put this cover on, it does minimize some of the noise, but this is clearly a louder machine than my Prusa machines. And those aren't enclosed at all. So just keep that in mind. Again, it's because of the speed in which this thing is printing. The other thing too is I finally was able to connect this to my router here in my home so that it is Wi-Fi, but I have yet to be able to meld that or connect that to the slicer on my computer as well as on my phone. So I'm sure I'm going to have to troubleshoot. Uh, I'm pretty certain that I'm going to be able to uh, get all of those features done. And because I don't have it connected to my phone, I can't see the uh, camera that's on the print head that you can see live on your phone. Also, I did download the proprietary slicer that does come with the machine. Now, you are able to use other slicers like Prusa Slicer or Cura, but I did want to go ahead and check uh, and try out Bamboo's slicer, and it's actually pretty good. I mean, I'm not doing anything super complicated. I'm just importing files in there, and so far I've had no problems pulling in STL files or 3MF files into the slicer and being able to get successful prints. And the auto support system that is a part of it is a lot easier to pull off 
of the prints than with the Prusa Slicer auto supports, although I have found a pretty good settings for my Prusa Slicer so that removal isn't uh, totally killing your fingers. But in the at least the default supports for this machine are relatively easy to remove, which I appreciate a lot. Also, even though I haven't been able to connect to this machine with a computer, I do have a mini SD card. And in all honesty, with all of my printers, I use SD cards to transfer the uh, sliced model over to the printers. I don't have any internet connection with any of the machines. So I don't really mind too much uh, being, if I can't get this connected via Wi-Fi, just using my SD card, mini SD card, in order to transfer the files here. And I tested it and it works great. So other than my current inability to connect it via Wi-Fi, um, I think everything else about this is really, really cool. Because of the increased speed that you have, because of the sophisticated bed leveling that you have with this machine, it being fully enclosed, and even the option to have different color or different types of filament if you opt for the filament attachment that goes across the top. I am really impressed with this machine. Now, if you were to ask me if I had $1,000, uh, which one would I pick? Would I pick the pre-built Prusa MK3S or would I pick the Bamboo Lab? That's really tough, that's really hard. I really love my Prusa machines and I know just through experience that they are reliable machines, that they are high quality, they're constantly being improved upon. And when something breaks, I can access it relatively easily because I haven't had to work on this and because it's fully enclosed. It might be more difficult to work on this as well. The nozzle is not a standard nozzle that you can buy, at least as I understand it. So in some ways, this might be more of a premium machine that if there is a breakdown, it probably will cost you more. Whereas the Prusa, you can buy most of the stuff, even aftermarket brand stuff uh, to fix up your Prusa relatively well. Because this is new, um, it might be a little bit more difficult to find the parts that you need. But who knows? I mean, because they raised almost $8 million in the Kickstarter, and I'm sure that they're going to have more business coming in, I'm sure that they're going to iterate and improve on this because of that success. I am hopeful that we are entering into a new era where 3D printers really do become plug and play, just like your computer printers that are printing out on sheets of paper, that that really is maintenance free and plug and play in the same way. I think this really is going to be the beginning of similar machines like this, where we as hobbyists don't have to spend a ton of time trying to figure out how to level the bed. So that is the biggest deterrent, I think, to most people, uh, the average person, the average gamer from getting into it. And I definitely believe that this is a turning point with Bamboo Lab. So make comments below if you have experience with this or if you finally are willing to pull the trigger. I mean, $1,000 is still $1,000. So it's gonna take some time before that price will come down to what by, might be more affordable for the consumer. Uh, I always think the sweet spot is more around $500. So it'll be a couple of years before that happens. But as you see this video, are you finally, if you haven't taken the plunge into 3D printing, is this something that's compelling for you to consider actually entering into the hobby? Otherwise, use the link below to go to my Patreon page to get in on the chance for these GGGGs giveaways for this month. Also use the link below if you want to go to Bamboo Labs website to pre-order this machine. Otherwise, happy printing, happy gaming. We'll see you next time.